Good morning. Good morning. I am, my name is Brianne Brew. I am executive director here at the ministry. And most of the time, Annette is the one speaking, and we are so grateful for that. Um, but we are also grateful because she has had a time of vacation and she is out on vacation and enjoying that. And we're so glad for that because it is so important to take the Sabbath and to take the rest. Yeah. Um, whether in your daily life or in ministry. And so, while she's out, I was given the honor to speak, and so I get to speak and share with you all today. Um, the Lord really put it on my heart to share on the subject of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and so I guess where the the heart in this came from, um, I've had some conversations recently about things that maybe someone asked me or assumed that everything in my life was easy and this, that, and the other. And, and maybe I share with them and they're like, oh, I didn't know that happened to you. Or how did, how are you able to look at that in such a good light? And it's like, that is the Holy Spirit. That is the difference. I have had the Holy Spirit. I've had, I've been saved and had the Holy Spirit my whole life, at least all the life that I can remember. Right. Cause I, you know, and, and so the difference is, is that in each situation that I've been in, whether it's been a good thing or it's been a struggle or it's been bad choices on my part, the Holy Spirit has been there to guide me, to comfort me, to give me peace, to encourage me and prod me and poke me and then encourage others to confirm that in me um, because it's not like it's always been... Um, I immediately listen. It'd be great if I did. And I would like to continue. I would like to do that. <laughs> um, and so the Holy Spirit is, is, it seems like the more you dig into who the Holy Spirit is, because he is a person, um, it gets a little bit harder to kind of explain in a small summary. It just kind of keeps growing. Um, you don't have to fully understand everything to receive or know the Holy Spirit. In fact, it would be kind of ridiculous if you did because that wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit. So um, I would like to start with some of the things that Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. So John 14, 26. My Bible's upside down. Let's try that again. <laughs> I'm reading from the New King James Version. Um, you know, we get questions sometimes about what's the best version of the Bible. And the depending on what language you speak, unless you speak ancient Hebrew and ancient Greek, you are reading a translation. Sure. So what translation speaks to your heart? Which Which translation can you read? And what's great, too, is I've got, you know, a Bible app on my phone and I can change translations. If I'm like, I don't understand or I want to go back like, that sounds odd. How did it translate in a different one? You can actually read different translations to um, help you understand better. And so the translation that works for you is the is the best translation. So John 14, 26. Um, so he had just said, he had just said, these are the things that I have spoken to you while being present. So this is before he is about to, to leave them. And Jesus said, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so the things that I wrote down, so some of the people here who have a, a pamphlet that Amanda put some of my notes in, um, the Holy Spirit teaches us, he brings things to our remembrance, and he gives us peace. The, the teaching of the Holy Spirit is so important. You know, Jesus taught in parables so much. Jesus had to find ways to teach people because they did not have that knowing in the Holy Spirit already. And so now he's like, now I, it's you're going to have, have it so much better because you're going to have the helper with you to teach you. You're going to have the helper that when you read what I said to give you inspiration of what it means. The remembrance thing is so big because, you know, I've said in the past, like I have a, I struggle 
memorizing scriptures to be able to quote them. But that's the Bible says right here, Jesus says the Holy Spirit will bring it to your remembrance. If you're reading the Bible and you're, you know, you're spending that time in the word, it's not a matter of your skill with memorization. It is the Holy Spirit's job to bring it up in the right time. Yes. And if you have the exact verse and to be able to quote with what the Holy Spirit brought up to you is not always what the person needs, right? If you need to, if he'll bring up that scripture and that yeah. what the Lord is meant to say and talk about peace. My peace I live with, leave with you. My peace I give you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled. Let it not be afraid. Peace that overcomes fear, peace that overcomes anxiety, peace that overcomes all the self-care that we can try to do to bring ourselves peace. This is an overwhelming supernatural peace. All right, let's move on to John 15, 26. But when the helper comes, who shall I send to you from the Father? The spirit of truth who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. And you will also bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So that's, I've got a note. He's the comforter because mine says the helper. And then it's got a special note. This is also translated the comforter. So he is our helper and he is our comforter. We have an, a comforter with us all the time who comforts us and soothes our soul. He will give us truth and discernment uh, and bear witness to our spirit whenever you are in a situation and you're like, I'm not sure. How many, to- how many times does that happen to us all the time? We have to make decisions and we're unsure. He will bear witness. He will give us the truth that we seek. He will let us have that revelation of truth of Jesus, right? John 16. And all these are on the same page on my, in, my, <laughs> in my Bible. John 16, 7 through 8. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So I have written, he is, he is to help us. He is to convict us. And he is to give us discernment. This is so that the, the conviction on our heart and their help in our heart to know this is this is not just in salvation. This is as we continue, as we grow in the Lord and we're like, you know, the Bible has lists, you know, it's got different spots that talks about sin, this and that and the other. But I don't know about you, but I have felt times where I have realized there is something in my life that is inhibiting me from my relationship with God and from being loving to others. And maybe it's not a scripture that I can say, this Bible says it's this, but the Holy Spirit convicts me of what that is, what that action is. And at different points in my growth and my relationship with the Lord, those things change because maybe I was doing both of these things at this beginning walk in the Lord, and maybe one of them was causing me to stumble. And maybe the other one was too, but it was, you know, it was not the crisis. At the time, and as I grew a little bit further in the Lord, He's like, "It's time to deal with this. Yeah. It's time to work on this. It's time to." And so that conviction is not just a convicting of guilt and sin. It's, Lord, what? Why do I feel like a stu- a stuck at a block? What do I need? And He's like, "This is what you need to work on. This is the next step that you need to work on." And it's so great because He doesn't give you forty five things. He gives you the next step you need to work on, which is a tangible, doable. It's where you're at. He meets you where you're at. Mark 13, 11. Jesus said, now he's, this is, I'm going to go back one to 10. And the gospel must first be preached to all the nations. But when they arrest you and deliver up to you up, do not worry beforehand or premeditate what you are to speak. But whatever is given to you in that hour, speak that. It is not you who speaks, but in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is dependable in a crisis. 
you are able to rely on him. He speaks on your behalf if you allow it. He is your supernatural advocate. Have you heard the term of an advocate before? Have you ever been in the hospital or with someone at the hospital and you're like, they need someone to fight for them? That's what the Jesus is. That's what the Holy Spirit is. He is your supernatural advocate. And in any time of trouble, in the end times, all of the time, you're walking around with inside of you a supernatural advocate. You are not relying on your knowledge alone, your wisdom alone, your strength alone, because we're not always as strong as we want to be. And what I have found is that in your weakest moments like this, right, when they arrest you and deliver you, you know, don't worry beforehand. Don't worry about what's going to happen at that point. Instead, build yourself up in the word, uh, renew your mind, put on the, you know, your armor of God. You just continue in that path because when those times come, because they will, not because the Lord put it on us, because he didn't, but because we live in this world yeah. where there is sin and where the after the fall, and it will come. But when it comes, we have a supernatural advocate to speak on our behalf. Amen. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna read two scriptures back to back because they're actually from the same time, but tra- but remembered differently from different disciples. So Mark 16. Uh, 15 through 18. I'll pick this up. I'll read it a little easier. <laughs> Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will take up serpents. And they sh- and if they drink anything deadly, it will by, be n- by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. This is the Great Commission. This is part of the Great Commission. And in Matthew 28, 18 is also the Great Commission at the same time. And they both wrote a little bit different parts. Wouldn't it have been cool if they would have had like audio recordings of what Jesus said? (laughs) All right, Matthew. uh, I flipped those numbers. Let's try that again. 28. All right, 28, 18, Jesus came and spoke to them and saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Think about both of those scriptures together. You know, during that time when he gave that great commission, After he's already told them, he's like, it's important that I go. It's important that I fulfill why I have come here. I have come, all the prophecies and all the words, God's words speaking, spoken. He was the word made flesh to come here in perfect glory with no sin and to die on the cross as a sacrifice so that then we can be restored to have a relationship with God, and then he can send the Holy Spirit to have that connection restored so that we're not having to rely on, hey, Jesus, will you ask God if blah, 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 you know, it's instead it's inside of us, right? He's like, you don't know how much better it will be after I'm gone, I have to do this. And so uh, I do want to mention here, we've had, we get some questions occasionally about baptizing. Um, Do you just baptize in the name of Jesus? Do you baptize? You do baptize in the name of Jesus with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's all three. It is. Sometimes I think we make it a little complicated, the Trinity. Um, One of the ways I like to think about it, um, you know, one of my favorite scriptures talks about where Jesus says, I am the vine and you are the branches. And if you think about a tree or you don't think about all the different elements of a tree as something different. 
they're all in one. You can't really, you know, separate them. And so if like a tree is, is the source, you've got the, you know, the, the, the creation, the whole, the Lord, and then you've got Jesus who's made the branch, made the way so that we are the branch, you know, we branch from him. And then you've got the Holy Spirit, like the source and the living water flowing through that, right? Jesus made the wine so that the Spirit could continue to talk and connect with us. They are distinct, but also together. It's, it's beautiful, and it is also a realization of the Holy Spirit to understand. It's very hard to explain to someone from, you know, this is the da 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 da, but it is a, when you receive that revelation, it's, it's like, it seems so simple <laughs> at the same time, but it is beyond us. You know, we live in this human world. We live in this world that he's created. He's created so much more. We don't, we don't even know all of that. And that's just the physical creation of things. What about all the different spiritual realms and everything else? I mean, we get to know parts of what we know now, right? And we're lucky enough to know more than they knew a hundred years ago or a thousand years ago. We, you know, we have a difference. Or what about 2,500 years ago before they even had Jesus, right? We're, we get to know we're increasing in what we know all the time. So those are some of the things that Jesus said about the Holy Spirit. So we're supposed to be baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and you will do these things, right? The speaking in tongues and the and the healing people and casting out and, and, and preaching and reaching others. So let's talk a little bit about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Um, this is, the Lord meets you where you're at. And you may have been received, you've been born again and filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time. That may have been your experience. Um, or maybe you receive a second baptism of the Holy Spirit. So when I was two years old, I was born again. I prayed with my dad. Real simple prayer. Jesus, come in my heart. Amen. You know, I was two years old. I did not re- receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit then. I couldn't make full sentences, right? <laughs> so, however, in the same way of salvation, which you have to believe and ask, that's, you know, that's, you have to believe and you have to ask. It is a choice. That is, that is the defining fact of the defining feature of humans is that the Lord gave us choices. So we get to choose to believe and we get to choose to ask. And so the same applies to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You want, you have to believe and you have to ask. And so at five years old, we were riding in a van after church. And so I'd been, I had, my parents were pastors. I had grown up in church. And so after church, I was sitting on the hump of the thing in the van because we didn't wear seatbelts in the 80s. And uh, <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting there and I was like, how come I can't speak in tongues? Because it. Because we were in a spiritful church and there was a move of the spirit and there was a speaking in tongues. And I'm like, I want to speak in tongues. And so my mom and dad are sitting there like, you can, you just have to ask to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And with the faith of the child, I said, I was like, okay, let's do it. And I prayed and right there and right then I started speaking in tongues. And what's beautiful about as a child is that you, you do have the faith of a child and you are not stuck on your ego. (laughs) Um, I was listening to some of the a series from Oil Oil Roberts and he talks about he's like the biggest thing that stops people from speaking in tongues is that they refuse to speak. They want it but they they won't say anything yeah. and you have to start it. You have to vocalize and allow the Holy Spirit to take over. And that is that is I believe I'm asking and then you have to vocalize to let that out and let um, those tongues come out. And if you hold that in, that's a choice. Yeah. You can choose to not speak. You can choose to be like, I want it, but I'm embarrassed and I'm not gonna. Yeah. The Lord doesn't love you any less. You are still filled with the Holy Spirit. You've still got the guidance and you've still got, you've still got the Holy Spirit with you. But I will tell you that speaking in tongues is such a benefit. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Amen. If the intercession and the guidance and the peace that comes with being able to speak in tongues when you don't know what is happening and what the situation should be, it edifies you. And so that's the benefit of that. The Lord gave that as a gift to edify us. And I'll expand a little bit more on tongues when it relies outwardly. But for the personal gift of speaking in tongues, it is meant to edify us. And there are many times, I know there's many times from some of the people I'm seeing here who maybe were woke up in the night or had times that I don't know what's going on. Someone's on my heart and I need to pray for them and I don't know what. And I'm able, I just able to speak, Father God. I'll just, I pray for Katie where she is right now. I don't know what's going on, but I pray for her. And I'm able, and then at a certain time, that, uh, that strong urge to do that resides, you know, and I've prayed through it and I'm able to go to sleep and I don't have to know the resolution to make a difference. I don't have to know the problem to make a difference. You know, the Lord really spoke to me. I'm really bad about like Googling, like trying to look up all the how things work. And sometimes that can be good. You learn all sorts of things, but when you're trying to like diagnose something, it's not so good. Right. (laughs) And so the Lord really spoke to me. He's like, you know, you don't have to have a diagnosis to be healed from it. You don't have to know. I know what is wrong. I know you don't have to know. Sometimes dwelling on what it is that's wrong is keeping us from getting our healing because we want to know what to pray for. But maybe you don't have to know what to pray for. I'm going to drink some water. All right, I'm going to give you some scriptures on the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongue. Acts 2, 38 and 39. I'll tell you something funny while I'm looking this up. I was trying to find a certain scripture and I couldn't remember where it was and so I tried to search it. And it gave me an AI result. <laughs> and I was like, well, it's probably right. I'll look it up. I'm like, it's not right. <laughs> I was like, I don't think the computers can read the Bible right. Okay. <laughs> they don't have the Holy Spirit. That's right. All right, Acts 2, 38 and 39, when Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises to you and to your children and and all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. I wanted to share this one because I know that some people think that the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues was just for those days. This is for all. This is This was given to us all. Acts 2-4, go back page. And this is, this is when they were all filled with the, Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak and the Spirit gave them utterance and spoke through them. And that was a, um, not a one-of-a-kind experience, but a unique experience. And they prayed and they spoke in tongue up in those rooms and it edified themselves and they spoke amongst themselves. And then they went out and manifested the gift of tongues and spoke out to the people and people were able to hear that in their own tongue. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Amen. 1 Corinthians 14. (laughs) 
2 through 5. For he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks edification and exhortation to comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. This is the the this we're getting into gifts of the spirit some, but we're talking about when you're speaking in tongues for yourself, edifying yourself versus speaking prophesying and edifying the church. Prophecy should edify the church. It is not prophecies of doom, it is prophecies to edify the church. There may be some so this something is coming, but the Lord has prepared a way for you, right? The, the, the doom portion of prophecies is not meant to be for the church, right? The, the prepare yourself. It's a warning to prepare yourself and encouragement and edification. And that's got a wonderful book about the, about the spirit of prophecy that's both about, pro, you know, learning to prophesy in your own life and in your own family. Also understanding the, the gift of prophecy, how prophecy works in, in music and in worship. Um, her story of receiving the Holy Spirit. So good. So good. So tongues, prophecy, edifying. Um, the Holy Spirit is our guide. He guides us. He leads us. He inter- He guides us in intercession so that we can intercede for others. He gives us discernment. I'll tell you a funny story. So when I was a kid, my parents, my parents always listened to the Holy Spirit. Well, I say always. I mean, I don't know if they didn't, but (laughs) there was many a times that they listened to the Holy Spirit and I saw the results of it, right? So I'll give you one for my brother. He was at the movies and... My mom had this, go get him. He's not where he's supposed to be in her spirit. And she was busy doing other things. And so she's, and so go get him. He's not where he's supposed to be. He was pretty little and she went and got him and he was supposed to be in a kid's movie and he was in Terminator 2. <laughs> <laughs> they were in a church meeting and my mom smacks my dad, go get Brianne. Go get Brianne. So that he leaves, like he's helping lead, like they're leading this, you know? So he leaves, he goes to get me. I was at a friend's house. He almost hits me with his car because me and my friends were riding a skateboard. We're getting at the top of the driveway and we're laying on it and just riding it into the street. But we've been doing it so long, it got dark. So I was laying on a skateboard in the middle of the street. That saved my life. That saved my life. And that'll tell you stories about when she was woken up in intercessory prayer to pray for my mom and for us. And we were on the edge of a cliff, literally, in an ice storm, and it saved our life. The Holy Spirit will protect and lead you and guide you and let you intercede for your loved ones. Amen? You better, you better bet, Amanda, if she wakes up with the inkling of a spirit to pray for her son while he's gone, that she will do it. Because he will make a way and he will intercede for us. That's right. The the personal baptism of the Holy Spirit, the personal gifts of the Holy Spirit, it gets, it starts to blur into the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are given, that are meant for others. Um, Because they overlap a little bit, they're similar. Um, the gifts of the, there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12. The words of wisdom, words of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. Um, and so, you know, intercession goes into this too. I, Having that intercession for others, that's kind of a gift of the Spirit. When you're praying, you know, you don't know what to pray and you're going to pray, but when you when you are given an inkling to pray for others, for the benefit of others, that's also, you've developed your relationship with the Heavenly Father and your, you've opened your heart up to know when to pray for others. And the Lord will speak to you about yourself and he will encourage and prod you about yourself. And sometimes... Someone else will have a word of knowledge to you, 
And I will tell you that that will always coincide with what the Holy Spirit has already been speaking to you. If you're getting a word of knowledge from somebody and it's like out of left field and you're going to like go and do this, that's not what this is. And so my mom always used to tell stories about when she was not living for the Lord and she was and people used to tell my grandpa, Charles Caps, what are you going to do about Beverly? He's like, I've done what I'm going to do about Beverly. It's not my job anymore. You know, <laughs> I pray for her. I raised her and, and she's an adult. And there was a time that she was in a church service. And do you guys remember, was it Kenneth Copeland? That, was it Kenneth Copeland? And Kenneth Copeland prophesied to her and spoke to her and had a word of knowledge for her. And it was not about anything he already knew. That was a word of knowledge from the Lord. And it brought up what the Lord's already been telling to her that she's been stuffing down, right? She'd been pushing it down. She knew she had a relationship with the Lord. She knew. Mm -hmm. And she'd been pushing it down. And that connection of God cares about me enough to stop this service, to give me a word of knowledge, to tell me something I already know that you've already told me because I haven't listened. And it's like, that's when that starts to overlap that personal connection with that spiritual gift. I'm not going to dive into all the spiritual gifts and how they all work because I've listened to tons of sermons on that. I'm still learning, you know, and gleaning things, all that. But I do want to mention that these are, this is like a growth thing, right? You want to, you have to want to receive the Holy Spirit and then you grow upon that. Learn how to apply the Holy Spirit to your life. Learn how to listen to him as a guide. Learn how to soften your spirit to hear him and hear his voice. And as you go in that, then you will develop a desire to have a gift of the spirit or to have gifts of the spirit work in your life because it, it's not one person gets one gift kind of thing. It can be different. And then upon, even upon that, you can desire to have, if you're meant to have a fivefold ministry gift of apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, or maybe desire to be an interpreter of a service that can help lead a service, a a congregation in the move of the Spirit and in the flow of that, or maybe admin an administrator or a helper or different things. But that all builds and grows upon that personal baptism of the Holy Spirit and growth. The other thing that's really, really important about gifts of the Spirit because gifts of this, these gifts of the Spirit affect others, right? They are for others. You don't get a word of knowledge about yourself. That's a personal, re- you know, that's a personal revelation. You know, you get those things for others. It's meant for the benefit of others. And so the most important thing in, chap- in 1 Corinthians 13, the whole chapter is about this. You have to love people. If you don't love people, then God can't use the gifts of the Spirit through you. Because you have to... If you just want to glorify yourself, you're trying to stand in your own power. It is very humbling to be used by a gift of the Spirit. And listening to Oral Roberts talk about being used for gifts of healing in different times and how many times that he prayed for people and they weren't healed, or maybe he wasn't feeling like he was going to be able to do it. And he's like, okay, well, and he... You know, he's, he, I listened to this one this morning. I, he prayed for a blind man. He's, he's like, I prayed for all these people and all of, you know, who had had major things in this line and nobody had shown a manifestation of healing. And he's like, and so I'm just kind of like, just let's get it done. <laughs> and he pray, lays his hand on this man and prays for him to receive his sight because he was completely blind. And the man, and then he moves on. And he goes, I can see. Just calm as can be. I can see I'm healed. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and Oral Roberts is humbled by that, yeah. right? Because it was not in his power. It was, a, he was being obedient. He was allowing it to flow through him. And then it was manifest. Yes. Hallelujah. Those gifts of the Holy Spirit are not just for the apostles, prophet, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. The gifts of the Spirit can be used by, through any of us. Um, and it is for you. It is for you. And becoming sensitive to the Spirit for your own life helps you become sensitive to when it's time to act 
so that God can use you for one of those Mm -hmm. gifts of the Spirit. Because again, if you, if God gives you a word of knowledge about someone, but you don't speak it, it's not a word of knowledge. You have to act. You have to speak it out. And so learning to do that for yourself is a big point and process for that. This is for you. Don't let fear Don't let doubts, don't let thoughts of failure, don't let shame, don't let past failures prevent you from wanting this in your life. The Lord has provided it. He wants you to have it. And it's so important. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. It is in our humbling and in our weakness that we allow the Lord to take over. Sometimes when we're in our strength, it's hard to let go. It's not that he, it's not that we have to be weak for the Lord to take over, but we have to be willing to let him. And so sometimes we don't learn that until we are weak, but you don't have to, right? Um, Oral Roberts this one, this one stuck with me. I've been listening to some of his uh, Holy Spirit here in the now um, series that he taught. And so one that's really stuck with me um, is you're just supposed to take the first step he gave you. You don't have to worry about the next step. Isn't that great? He's meeting you where you're at. You don't have to have the knowledge, experience, ability, resources or anything for step two. Because he's told you about step one, and that's because you can do that now. And until you do do that, stop trying to do number two. You know, like stop trying to move on and do this. And, uh, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit really has put in me some things. And, you know, and then I go and I'm, I seek him and I'm like, all right, Lord, what do I need to do next? He's like, you still haven't done that. I'm not telling you anything else because you won't do that. All right. <laughs> heard. (laughs) That's that convicting of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to end and share a, um, a word from the Lord that the Lord gave me. Um, oh, I guess it was a couple months ago. Um, and I just strongly heard the word qualified. And then the Lord began to speak to me and I was so about to, like, I was like, oh, the Lord's speaking to me. He's going to tell me I'm qualified to do this. And da, 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 da. And I hear, You are as unqualified today as you were when you were 13 years old. And it hit, and I'm like, and that wasn't the it. Then it was real emphasized. And I can use you today just as well as I could then. Stop thinking you need to go to Bible school for God to use you. Stop thinking you need to have know where every chapter of the Bible is or where every book of the Bible is for God to use you. Stop thinking you need your life right in every area for God to use you. Stop thinking you have to quit smoking before you can witness to somebody. Stop thinking that your weaknesses you have to overcome in order for God to use you. Have you read the Bible and seen how many people were super screwed up and used by God? <laughs> You know, some of the, you know, when you read about Jacob and how he screwed his brother over and all these different things, and it's like, and yet the Lord still used him because he was willing, he was obedient, and he was willing to act on what the Lord said. That's all you need. That's all you need. Amen? Thank you. And let's let's close in some prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for fulfilling your word for sending your son Jesus to fulfill the word that you have spoken, for giving us the Holy Spirit so that we are connected to you until it is time for us to be reunited reunited with you. Heavenly Father, speak into our hearts. Bless each and every one of us in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for those who are desiring to receive the Holy Spirit right now. First, if they're desiring to receive salvation, and the Holy Spirit, that you prod them to speak the words now. Heavenly Father, I believe you have sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins, and I receive that salvation. 
Heavenly Father, I ask and receive for your infilling of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. And if you are already saved and you want to receive this Holy Spirit, you ask, you tell the Lord, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. I ask, I believe, and I receive it. And then you begin to speak. You let the sound come out of your vocal cords and let the Holy Spirit take over. Let's just spend some time praying in tongues and praying and speaking. Thank you for guiding and protecting me in every step and stage of my life. Thank you for protecting my children. Thank you for guiding and leading me. Thank you for giving me intercession over those who need it. Thank you for friends who have listened to your spirit and given me comfort back when I've needed it, Heavenly Father. We just praise and we worship you. We thank you for your presence. We worship you, your holy, glorious name. 